All right. I'm getting ready to cut the ovals, and what I thought I'd take a second out to do, it, it's kind of unusual. Uh, the, the head oval is big enough, instead of using our little friend, the little finger tool, to actually use this flame as a trench cutter. It's one of the few times, so. Now we're keeping more of the pull out here on the edge and not going real deep on this pull. We'll go in there and hit it a couple of times. And notice that I'm wiggling in an up and down motion. Gotta be careful because it wouldn't be hard if you start pulling too hard to bust through that wall and there's no tube that would put us in an epoxy situation. So I go back and forth like I showed you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set the trenching to be done up on all four corners. What my goal here to do guys is to form a baby rectangle. Not really an oval, not really a rectangle. I'm going to have about three-eighths of a radius or close to it actually in the corners right here, which I haven't got into showing you how I create radiuses and pull them in. Uh, I'm saving that for something else. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead, set my trenches on it, pull back around and show you what that looks like and then pull the material. We're on the roofs now, and although I've already showed you how clover leaf, the bottoms are done the top, this one here has got something special going on. I say special in a lighthearted way. What we got here is a big imbalance problem. On the what I call the hook port, look at that giant bulge. That's for the rocker stud. This right here is a serious flow disruptor and one chunk of meat. Now what I'm going to show you is how I go in here while I'm clover leafing and just take that whole sumbitch out right there and then form the trench here and here and then there's a center cut to make it balance out to the port on the side which has long been a problem associated with the big block Chevrolet head. Alright, so first got to get old butcher hog here. Let's go in here and start at the source, which is the um, uh, problem of it. Oop, got my hair turned off. Hold on a minute. Alright, and let's lay waste to this turkey. First, I'll start my trenching, which you know I do. I'm actually coming into the wall and down at the same time with the pressure that I'm applying. Because this wall here is a little worse than the wall beside it. Now, I've got the, I've got the preliminary trench dug, so I'm going to carry it on up to the side here and keep this out. As I'm cutting on that mound, I'm going in a downward shape because it ain't just going this way. I got to go down too to dig it where I got a certain amount of that bolt hole exposed. Yeah, that's what I thought. My glove's right in your way. It's so hard to get it. Let me see if I can position it better. I'll try that. It's just so hard with my hand right there in the way, but I gotta have control. I mean, you can just see the, sh the, the shreds of cast iron with this big double-faced butcher hog. It just really cuts it out. Now, 
Now we connect the dots. Look where I went to here and then to here. I mean, to get one of these ovals to really come in right, it's a lot of work on the roof of this port. It's just a ton of meat, especially where that big bulge is where the rocker stud goes. Now you can start to see where it's busting through, right there near the outer part of that bowl. Now that, my friends, is seriously laying waste to this turkey. makes it a lot easier and you guys are going to absolutely love what I'm fixing to show you. What I'm going to do is form a center cut. I'm going to come right down the middle. I hope I can get you. I'm going to start right about where that bulge is. See, it looks like a couple of rows of gardens, but we're not done yet. We got one more garden row to go. That's right, right in the corner. to my well to cool them blades off. Look at it. Smoking. Now watch that line. One, two, three. We got three garden 
railroads here. Now, it's connect the dot time at this point. I'll go in there and put them all in. I'm going to go ahead right now and finish cutting trenches and the rest of the ports and lay it because all in all, it's, I mean, it's just a big shove, almost a quarter of an inch of meat that you have to take straight off the roof of this all the way to the guide in order for it to feed that 2250 valve. So all you guys out there that like to take these over ports and slam the 2250s, that's great. That's great. But if you don't go in here and do this, you might as well stick to something below a 219 because all you've done is got a valve, a combustion chamber full of pretty shiny valves that won't do shit. All right. Beside the fact that my hand is about to fall off, let me show you what's going on. All right, here's a port, and this was the one that's the hook. We're pretty much most of it done. There is some final touches I got to pull in on it. But as you can see, the one next beside of it, there's the setting depth and the trenches, three garden rows. Them rows are probably about 125 to 150 thick. Remember that when you pull in on them trenches and level them, it's also going to go down more. You're going to have to to get it to work out right. That way, it's going to let it be a, a big gulp of air pulling into it to send it around that short term. Let me get a more level shot with the camera. You can see the real way. I mean, man, that looks like a Ruffles potato chip there on the right. See the waves and just all that chunk meat just has to come out of there. Look how nice. Now when you look at this line, the port is going straight back. There ain't no port then come up and hump like a big giant funnel because I don't do funnels here. So that's what it takes in your trenching. And the reason I do a center shot on this compared to the small block heads there's just not enough meat on the small block. When you get into the big block stuff, the cross-sectional area is so much greater that a third trench has to be dug on it. I even do it on the sides and sometimes on the bottoms up to a point. So anyway, let's take a look now on the finished port on the, from a side point of view. Now as you can see, that whole area right here, remember how thick and bulged up that was? And of course, that's the hole where the rocker stud goes. Raising the roof up, dug that out, pulled that out of the way, and we got a lot better shot. And what's going to happen is now that hook port is going to balance out to that port. It's amazing the CC difference between the two before you start, and then finally, I will CC them both at the end. So you can see how well that it tries to balance them out and get the flow numbers pretty close to each other. But anyway, that's going to be all for now. I'm going to go ahead and finish them and level all the garden rows and pull all of it in. And um, then I'll do my fine tuning and blending. I clean up the exhaust a little bit. There ain't a whole lot to do in there. Um, mainly there's some on the roof and then straighten that out. Then I'll be ready to do the valve job and guides. All right.